So how would you say you were seventh grade and sixth grade skill wise? I always. All right, we're here live on the trail with one of the biggest stock rises of the 2023 class. I am very excited for this episode because he's from my hometown, seven foot one, Dennis Evans. Man, thank you for joining us, man, today. Uh, it's no problem. It's a great, uh, great opportunity. Yeah, man. I, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go on a little rant. L.A., we're coming. I've been saying this for a long time. We finally got enough guys from the IE to compete. We got the Ball Brothers. You know, we got Jerry McCain playing out in Corona Centennial. And now we got Dennis Evans. You know, he averaged a double-double. Average seven blocks. I'm going to drop the bomb because seven blocks. <laughs> averaging seven blocks is honestly crazy, to be honest with you. Honestly, tell me, you know, what your offers were like last year and what they are now. Like, how many offers did you have around this time last year? Uh, around this time last year, I think I had about three offers from some uh, lower D1 schools. Uh, and coming, like, coming into this season, it definitely went up a whole lot. Yeah, and, and, like, in the last four months, can you tell everybody, like, what your offers look like now? Like, what are some, some places that I've been offering you? Uh, right now I got a uh, Kansas, Minnesota, TCU, Kentucky, Mizzou. Uh, pretty sure there's another Texas school, and it's been it's been like, getting a lot more, you know, but a lot more offers since last time around. Yep, and you play for Team USA, bro. As you can see, the stock went way, way, way up. Mark, Mark, Mark. <laughs> the, the stock is way, way, way up now. You know, and you know, the crazy thing is, is that, you know, me and Harrison, you know, a guy that I play with, you know, and, you know, a guy that's been around, you know, a lot throughout your life too, as well. He, you know, I hadn't started the high school scene yet. And um, I'll never forget this. We are at Damien Classic last year. We're sitting down and he'll tell you this story too. I was asking him like, what's, who's the next guys at IE, right? And then he was like, man, we got a guy, he's out of Hillcrest. And it's funny because a lot of people don't not know where Hillcrest is, you know, out of the IE, right? So I'm like, Hillcrest, like, where is that? He's like, that's an IE. And he was like, yeah, this is a kid, man. His his name is Dennis Evans. Mark my words, he's next. And then, bro, next thing you know, we fast forward to April. I see a video of you. I call him immediately. I'm like, bro, this is Dennis Evans. And he was like, yeah, that's it right there. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. So like. When do you feel like everybody started like taking notice? You know, like w when was the time? Was it in April? I feel like yeah, they started taking more notice like around this summer after the the first time around in Texas. Yeah, in Texas it was, and then you know, uh, just just talking about you know your skill set, like where did that like how did that come about? You know, like just take me through like your journey in terms of like you building up your skill set. Well, first you started off with some low post stuff. I uh, learned how to shoot a hook shot pretty well. Then we started to work on expanding my game, working on my shooting. So I'll become more of a consistent free throw shooter. And eventually it translated to, you know, being able to catch and shoot different shots on the court. And hopefully we'll be able to, you know, continue to get better at it. Yeah. Nah, I mean, bro, your touch at your size, man, is, is crazy. Um, you know, I got a chance to see you at, I think, when was it? Compton Magic had did an event. Uh, and I saw you, you know, a little bit during that time. And, man, I was impressed. But the biggest thing that has shocked me is, like, how did you go under the radar, bro? Like, you averaged seven blocks. Like, you know, I'm a shot blocker myself. So, like, when I see a shot blocker, I'm trying to figure out myself, like, how does a guy from the IE, my own hometown, go under the radar, you know, even averaging a double-double in seven blocks? I don't get it. Like, is Hillcrest not getting the, the recognition it deserves or what? You know, uh, you know, it's, yeah, it's a smaller school. Not too many people know about it. But also, you know, uh, I'm not big on social media. And don't post a whole lot. And, you know, don't really put my name into too many things. Hey, that's a good thing. I'm going to drop the bomb on that one too, bro. Because, I mean, you don't need to be in the social media. I mean, you know, Harrison, you know, a lot of people that are around, those guys are low-key. And I can see why you hang out with them too. Because you low-key yourself. And, you know, they've never been at, like, been – you know, OD on social, I mean, now they are, but, like, they like being, you know, under the radar. So, you know, I, I, I commend you because now timing is right, and now, look, you're getting the credit that you deserve, and people found you. You know, like, people are going to find you. If you're good enough, people will find you. But 
you talked about, you know, how you got your skill set together. Take me through your workout routine. You know, what you do from the start of your day to the end, like right now. Uh, first, we start off with some touch shots near hold the on, rim. Hold on, you got to tell me the times, though. Like, what time? Oh. When you get up in the morning, what time? You know, you brush your teeth or you go straight to the gym? Like, tell me the times. Walk me through the times. Usually, we wake up, like, at probably 4 to 4.30, get something to eat, brush my teeth, make sure I'm ready. We leave around 5, try to get there before 5.30, you know, get started, warm up on the court. Uh, we, we really starting to get into getting into drills around 6.00. And then, you know, start getting more shots up around, you know, seven. Then seven to seven to eight, we're getting shots up. We usually end around probably eight, fifteen to eight thirty. Finishing up on some, you know, small touch shots. And that's Monday. That and then that's Monday through through Friday, or is that Monday through Sunday? Uh we do right now we're doing Monday through through Saturday. Monday through Saturday. So you getting up every morning at four thirty and then you going to the gym around five thirty. Yeah. I'm dropping a bomb again. This is what I'm talking about. This is why it, it makes sense because I'm like, bro, I'm seeing your skill set, you know. If once you once you guys see, you guys definitely look his look him up, man, on, on social. You can look him up on YouTube. Bro, what he can do off the dribble has been amazing. And and it didn't come overnight. Cause I've seen the videos. Harrison showed me how how it started. Like, when did you start feeling like, okay, now I'm starting to see the progression that you know, that I want to be at because, you know, I saw from start to finish and like, how, how did that go about? You know, it, I feel like I started to build more confidence going into my sophomore year because I started to see a bit of progression and, you know, once, well, when the pandemic hit, it slowed everything down. So towards the end of the year, we started back up and I started, you know, getting more focused, getting in the gym a lot more, trying to make sure I continue to build off of it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I like it. What are some things that you want to improve on for next season? I feel like I could be a, become a better passer, you know, improve my offensive awareness and probably work on my leadership skills. So, you know, make sure everyone's in tune, make sure we're all, we're all on the same page when we do things. Yeah, I know. I, I, I like what, what leadership skills have, has things changed for you now? Like, especially on your AU team, I know you play with Team Inland. Now are people looking at you like, yo, Dennis, like in the huddle, like, yo, what we want to do? Like, I know it's kind of changing because like I remember how it was for me being a junior to my senior year, like me not barely even playing to me being one of the leaders on the team. How is it for you? Like, is it is it taking adjustment or have you kind of already been the leader of your team like going forward? Well, yeah, it's been an adjustment because last year we had a different leader, you know, and one of our veteran guards. This year, you know, I had to step up. Uh, I take more of a leadership role on the defensive end, and I'm kind of I'm starting to work on the offensive end as well. Yeah, no, I mean, not kind of a lot. I mean, you got the turnaround down pack, and then you could put the ball on the floor. I mean, like, are people shocked when they see you like do those things? Like, because you can play and pick and pop. I think that's like a premium. Like, I've been saying this for a long time. I think bigs like you are becoming a premium again. Because now, I mean, we always talk about small ball fives, but, you know, we see guys like JB Biggerstaff with the Cavs, you know, run the big lineups. Now I feel like that's becoming more of a premium. Like, now when people see you, is that the first thing people talk about? Like, man, like your skill set, like at your size, like what you're able to do. Yeah, they mainly talk about, you know, my skill set and, you know, how much quicker that I am than the traditional person my size. Yep, yep. Where And, and you know, just speaking of that, like, where do you want to be five years from now, career-wise and also skill-wise, too, as well? Five years from now, I want to be, you know, in the NBA playing, hopefully, for the longest time possible. Yep. Nah, that's fire. That's fire. And then, you know, just talk about Team USA. You know, just recently you got invited to Team USA on a very talented team. Uh, you guys went up to Spain, right? Correct? Yeah. And then you guys won gold. Congratulations on that. How was that experience? You know, what are some things you learned from it? You know, what are some things you took from it? You know, uh, it was a tremendous experience. You know, things I learned is, you know, you got to be, got to keep a level head in different environments, especially out there. You know, everyone's not, no one's really rooting for you. You're in a foreign country and, you know, everyone's hoping you lose. Yeah, nah, that's true. And, you know, just, just some players that you play with, like who's some players are you like, yo, man, like, you know, I, you have some young guys too, Cooper Flag, Koa Pete. 
some of the young bucks and then you know ian jackson like those type of guys who's some guys where you're like man like he's tough like you've been watching a little bit uh you know i feel like most most of the squad out there was doing really well yeah but you know some of the names you just listed yeah they we've done they done really well out there you know hopefully got hopefully got the respect they deserved while they were out there yeah hey, i and, like it go ahead go keep going go ahead keep going my bad you know gonna continue to play you know play ball with uh with and against them you know this on this upcoming future but yeah there was a lot of talent on the team had a lot of fun while i was out there yeah now nah, i can tell man like just even by talking to you like you've been raised the correct way i i give you a setup question with that and you said all my teammates are great you didn't name one particular person you said all of them that's fire you know another person i want to talk about is team inland you kool-aid people don't know uh, uh, a lot of people don't know who that is, but if you're from the IE, you do know who that is because he's had a lot of players come out of there and, you know, you're playing with a team that's not on the circuit, but a team that is very well recognized and has been around for a long time. A lot of teams from the IE aren't here anymore and Team Inland is still here. Talk about Kool-Aid, man, and what you've learned from him, uh, you know, over the years. Yeah, Kool-Aid, he's a, he's a tremendous dude. He found me when he was picking up my cousin for an AAU game. I was at his, I was at their house at the time, you know, hanging out. And, you know, he seen me. He asked me if I played ball. I haven't, I haven't played ball yet. Then he got me started, got me going. Wait, hold on. You said you weren't playing ball. So what, how old, what grade were you in? When did you start? You ain't, you, you got to throw that in there now that you said I was, that. I was about in sixth grade at the time. I was a pretty tall kid. He thought I was a, a freshman in high school. <laughs> hold on, I gotta drop the bomb, dog. So hold on, what was the response when he found out? Like, yo, like, he wait sixth grade. I know he's probably like, hold on, sixth grade. He was yeah, like, he yeah, was come with us, come yeah. with us. Uh, I need to talk to your parents. Uh. Yeah, he wanted to, you know, he wanted to get me going in something special. And I was starting to get interested in sports and doing different things, so it was a good timing and a good opportunity for me. So, how would you say you were seventh grade and sixth grade? Skill wise. I was terrible. <laughs> what you mean, bro? Like, can I explain a little bit? Like, I just want people I, to hear the growth. Uh, I was that was that one tall kid you would pick up just to stand at the rim. That's it. Nothing else. They just want you I, to stand next to the rim. You couldn't couldn't yeah. do anything at the moment. Just stand in the rim, grab the rebound, and pass it to somebody. Because uh, I remember on the first time doing jump ball, uh, I didn't tip it. I straight up just grabbed the ball and passed it to my teammate. <laughs> that's guts bro nah man that's what i'm saying man the skill way, set way, though way up. Mark, Mark, Mark. it's way up and you know that's what i like i mean just you know hearing the progression and one thing about this game is that people are always gonna see your potential and what you can be and i could tell like you're just gonna grow and your skill set is gonna keep getting better and better over time and you know last two questions first of all thank you for your time you don't play on the circuit Right. And, you know, this is this is my first AU experience, too. Like, I really started getting into the AU scene in April. You were honestly one of my first videos, you know, and that video went crazy. But one of the things that I really like that is different about you is that you're not playing on the circuit and you're not trying to go play on the circuit. A lot of kids feel like you need to play on the circuit in order for you to get seen. And look what you and also Xavier Booker have done. You guys have, like, turned, like, Turn the uh, ranking boards upside down, honestly, bro, to be honest with you. Like, how do you feel about that, not playing on the circuit? You feel like schools are going to find you no matter what? And do you need to play on the circuit to, in your, in, you know, to you? Oh, well, not playing on the circuit, it, it, it's, it's different. Like, not playing on the circuit, there's always going to be differences. Because on the circuit, you know, they're more focused on colleges, more see a lot more. But playing off the circuit, you get to work on your skills without being seen, you know, work in the background. So by the time they do see you when you play against those kids that, you know, are a lot higher than you and you able to keep your own or even do better, it looks a lot better for you. So you feel like playing, not playing on a circuit helps you enhance your skills because pretty much if you when you play on a circuit, just for the people at home, you're playing with a lot of the top guys, you know, guys that are like big names, feel like they're the superstars. And, you know, for you, you feel like it's being able to, to – you know, help your skill set a lot more, and you're not playing on the on the circuit. Oh, it's helped me definitely because I've been able to you know work in the background, and as my skills begin to mature and get better, 
eventually we started going against better and better teams because we were, you know, going up in division, going up in the in the pools, and it, eventually it, we ended up here. Yes, sir, my guy. And then last question. I know if you around Harrison, y'all are watching game film. I know Har I know Harrison. I'm gonna drop the bomb because I know if you around anybody that's in your circle, I just say Harrison because you know you guys came from the same area. So I don't know who else you hang with because you know we different in age, but I know you watch film, right? Mm -hmm. Who are some guys that you watch that in the NBA, you know, in college that is someone like that you watch on film and that you like, like some players that you want to resemble? Uh, in the NBA right now, I watch. I try to watch Joel offensively because he he has a really he has really good inside out. He's really especially in the low post. I got it. I got him working on developing my low post skills as well as face up game. Yeah, no, nah, nah, I like that. That's a that's a great answer. Honestly, that's not an answer I've heard. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the bomb again. You know, and just talk about that. You know, just facing up in the post. I feel like that's essential. Like, what are some things you feel like are benefits of a guy, you know, your size seven one? Because a lot of people that don't know basketball are like, you need to have your back to the basket. Facing up is actually a luxury too. What do you feel about facing up? What does that help you do? Well, it keeps everyone on their toes because now you can see the whole floor. You can't, you, it's hard to get double because you can see where they're coming from. And at the same time, there's so many attack options, especially if the defense, you know, kind of relaxes a little bit too much. And you can always go back into a back down if you see that no one's coming to help. So uh, I'm dropping the bomb again, dog. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not just dropping the bomb. I'm perfect. Hey, yo, yo, son. That is a great answer, bro. Great answer. Great answer. Now I appreciate you, man. We're gonna we're gonna have you on a few more times. You know, I'm I'm happy for you on all your success, your journey, your bright kid. You know, I I, I love I just love seeing you know. People from the IE come out and succeed, bro. I really appreciate your time too, man.